So welcome everybody. This is Vincent Pemer talking to you and especially presenting to you uh, Professor Henjon Lee from the University of uh, uh, Busan. Um, he's actually working among other professors uh, in the prosthodontic departments and on top of this he's a, a very dear friend of ours and a former teammate and family member of the Geneva team. So he was working with us and spending a year as an ITI scholar at the University of Geneva, which is the reason we became friends. And also we started this endeavor of this joint research collaboration. And um, uh, dear Johnny, um, tell us a little bit about your ideas, you know, starting this research project. Oh, uh, this idea, yeah, you know, when we increase the VD vertical dimension, yeah, usually we using we are using the articulator, virtual art articulator or conventional articulator like this, and you know as you know it always rotates like this, yeah, one hundred percent rotates. So, yeah. so that was my point actually. Oh, when we increase VD in articulator, it only rotates as you know. But however, I thought there would be some some translation portion of movement. So in this era of digital dentistry, now we can see, we can easily control the movement of mandible virtually using rotation or translation or combining movement. Yes. So we can control it and we can measure it exactly in digital software. So, so I try to, for this reason, when we open the mandible in the articulator, it only rotates and there would be some error compared to real mouth opening situation. So I try to minimize the error between virtual VD increasing and real VD increasing. Perfect. So yeah, so I try to find out the portion of rotational movement and translational movement close to, to make close to real opening situation in this study. Yes. So what is the, the methods that you compared? So I thought actually there would be two factor that would make error between the real situation and <coughs> in the articulator. So uh, one factor is when we uh, increasing the VD, uh, if we use some exact axis of condyle, then it would be more accurate yes. compared to just ab arbitrary mounting. Yeah. yeah. And second factor is uh, there, I thought there wouldn't be 100% rotational movement. There would be like 10% of translational movement combined, combined 90% rotation or 10% translation, something like that. So, so I made several group, just a uh, control group was the real, real patient. Yes. It was from real patient control and several group, uh, one group was just virtual mounting, arbitrary mounting on virtual articulator and just open with rotation. Yeah. And the other, some other group was I used a lateral picture, lateral picture of face. So in that face, we can get the axis of condyle. So yes. we can set mounting um, more accurately in digitally. Yeah. This is actually also, the first uh, picture that, that is uh, cited in the publication. Right, right. Exactly. Which you will see here now in the right hand side of the screen. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, so it was like figure one or something. Yeah, so yeah, so I compared several groups which were shown in this article, and I tried to find out which which group would be more more close to the real condition. Yeah. Perfect. So, so when I when I when I see this uh, this research project and I want to translate it to my daily routine working in a laboratory, working in a clinic with your partners, what would you advise us? You know, when we have a case of, let's say, worn dentition and we want to reestablish um, a vertical dimension of the patient before he actually started to wear his dentition. So what would 
be your advice for us? How should we open the vertical dimension? Hmm. So I would say, uh, according to this research, according to the research, I found out that when we increase one one millimeter of VD on anterior area using the articulator, uh, point zero point five three millimeter would be increased on the second molar area. However, in real intraoral condition, it was not 0.53 millimeter, it was 0.62 millimeter wow. would be opened. Yeah. So there, there is 0.1 millimeter of error. Yes. So there seems, there seems to be 0.1 millimeter of error on the under occlusion on second molar area per every one millimeter of VD increasing. And this is so like 20%, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, quite a lot. So when we increase two millimeter of VD on anterior area, then there would be 0.2 millimeter of under occlusion when yes. we use just, just articulator. Okay. Yeah. So we actually, it, it's not easy to control using this conventional articulator like rotation and translation movement, but if we can um, use the digital software, and if it is, we, if we can control rotate or translation, then 85% of rotation and 15% of translation was really close to the rear box condition. It was the result. Wonderful. So this is the take home message, basically working, especially in the, in the virtual environment, not only having 100% rotation, but really incorporating 85% uh, rotation with 15% uh, of translation. Yes, downward translation. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah. Not only, uh, you know, to, to see you again was a huge pleasure, but also to, to get your personal insights into this research project. Um, once again, we are trying to bring the journal to life. Thank you so much and uh, yeah, have uh, a wonderful day. Thank you, Vincent.